So there are a lot of things that give water its taste. We get our water from two main sources, from surface water sources, like the reservoir behind me, and from groundwater. And as the water flows over the land and then percolates into the aquifers, it dissolves lots of minerals on all of the things that are on the land surface. Some of those things are calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and all of these things have different tastes. Some people say magnesium tastes a little bit bitter. Calcium can have a chalky taste. Sodium, of course, tastes salty. There are also organic materials that get caught in the water as it flows over in, into streams. Those are, include algae, leaf material, wood, and all of these things contribute to sometimes an earthy taste. That's why we build filter plants, to remove those objectionable tastes. People will sometimes ask, why does my water taste bad? Which is a complicated question. Some people can taste compounds at very low concentrations, and everybody's different. Some of the more common things that make a bad taste in water include iron, which can give water a metallic -y taste. We add chlorine to the water to disinfect it and keep it safe to drink. Some people can detect chlorine at very low concentrations, and others it doesn't bother at all. In groundwater sources, sulfur can create a rotten egg smell. And in surface water sources, algae and other organic constituents can create a musty or earthy smell. In surface water sources, we build water treatment facilities to filter out these objectionable tastes and odors. We're here in the lab at the Rockville Water Treatment Plant where we run many tests to make sure that the water is safe to drink. We start by testing for physical parameters. That includes pH, turbidity, color, odor, and temperature. These parameters give us a basic understanding of the water. Then we test to be sure there is no microbial or bacteriological contamination. That's the most important part of public safety is keeping microbial contamination out of the drinking water. Beyond that, we run more than 100 different tests to be sure that other constituents like nitrate, nitrite, volatile organic compounds, and other contaminants are not in your drinking water. We run these tests every month or every quarter depending on what they are. And for bacteriological contamination, we run these tests continuously. There's also a variety of tests that are run throughout the water treatment facility to be sure that the water treatment process is, is performing as we designed it. I'm about to show you those as well. We test the water every day in the lab, but in addition to running tests in the lab, we have online analyzers that are continuously monitoring water quality parameters throughout the treatment process. This is a turbidimeter, measuring the turbidity every minute so that we know how the treatment process is working. In addition to, to turbidimeters, we have chemical analyzers that analyze chlorine concentration, filter effectiveness, fluoride, and other chemical constituents too. And all of this can, can be controlled right here from the control panel. On this screen, we're able to see what any chemical concentration is or physical parameter of the water is at any point from the source all the way to the entry point to the distribution system. For surface water sources, the water needs to be disinfected. And in some cases, actually all cases in the state of Connecticut, it also needs to be filtered. Here we have four filter beds. These filters use granular activated carbon as the filter media. The water slowly percolates down through the filter media, removing any particles and also absorbing tastes and odors and organic carbon. Some filtered plants use sand, some use garnet. Anthracite is another common filter media. For groundwater sources, tests can sometimes show that there is no filtration needed. In other cases, utilities will use a filter plant to remove things like iron, manganese, and other constituents. Essentially, all of the water we use for drinking water comes from the rain. And when the rain falls, if you were to hold out your hands right now, it's perfectly pure to drink. What happens is it hits the ground surface and runs over the surface, collecting all of the things that might contaminate it. It then goes into storm drains, which you probably have seen, and which lead to streams and ultimately to our lakes. Some of it filters down through the ground and ends up in the aquifers. In the cases where it ends up in the lakes, it needs to be treated, disinfected, or filtered to remove any contaminants that it picked up as it ran over the land surface. With groundwater, it can often be pure enough because it's filtered through the earth. So a lot of those contaminants have been removed. Public water utilities are required to test for more than 90 regulated contaminants. We also test for some unregulated contaminants, which leads us up to about 150 overall water quality parameters that we test for. That's all in an effort to make sure that your water is safe to drink. 